what is going on? It is 12 noon on Wednesday, which means it's time for this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Charisma, and the show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. We're here every single Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern time to help you understand the technical side of the real estate industry. And what we're talking about today is easy money. Because a lot of people look at real estate and they say, wow, that looks like easy money. Or maybe they look at real estate investing and they say, okay, wow, that's easy money. And look, here's the truth. There's easy money to be made in real estate. Now the question is not, is there easy money? But now how do you get your hands on the easy money? How do you make it easy? And how do you avoid some of the traps of easy? Uh, you know, to, to share a little bit of my background, because that's a lot of the reasons why I'm up here on this stage trying to help as many people as I possibly can, because there's a lot of things in my past, in my history, that, that set me up for failure. And one of the things that really piqued my interest, so this goes way back to like 2007. And in 2007, there was a revolutionary book that came out called The Four Hour Work Weeks. And so I, I jumped right on that, read that, and I was like, okay, wow cool look at all these things you could work like four hours and make all this money I'm why would I want to work 40 hours when I could work four hours and there's a lot of good principles in there however if you're starting out there's a lot of things that you have to treat differently and it was a lot of those concepts I was hung up on for looking for the easiest money possible that delayed the real easy money you know, looking for that easy money up front delayed the easy money now. However, there is money that might seem easy just because of the way things are, just because where you may already be. But now the question is with changing prices, with inflation, with, with your own goals and dreams and aspirations, does getting your money to where it needs to be to live that type of life, to have the type of lifestyle, to be able to provide the type of opportunities that you want to be able to provide to your children, whatever the case may be, is that gonna be easy? Or do you need to get into a new vehicle? Do you need to get into a new situation? Do you need to get into something that could help you achieve success faster? Are you sitting there riding a turtle to success or are you on a rocket ship? because the rocket ship is gonna get you to the easy money a lot faster. So that's what we're gonna be breaking down today of you know, what is this easy money? You know, a lot of people don't even like to talk about money. It's a taboo topic. Oh, we shouldn't talk about money. And what that leads to is a lot of financial illiteracy. And if you don't know money and finances, it's gonna be very difficult for you to manage your money and finances. And even if money and finances aren't something that gets you excited, it's gonna be what funds and powers the things that do get you excited. Whether that be just maybe something like going on a vacation or being able to travel or schedule flexibility or maybe you wanna be able to give back to the community or anything like that. Any of that type of stuff, it all requires money. You need money just to get by. But if you're just getting by, you're never gonna to get to the easy money. So that's what we're gonna be breaking down today is you know what does easy money look like and how do you get yourself on a path to get to easy money. There's a lot of ways to do that through real estate. So I'm really excited to share some of these opportunities with you guys today. My name is John Christmas. The show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate and you're watching Ask the Instructor. You are watching Ask the Instructor. Absorb the knowledge. Become the expert. Hey, welcome back to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Carissimo, and this show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. If you need to get your real estate license, complete any continuing education requirements for your real estate license, call us up, 813-333-2676. You know, what we're gonna be sharing with you today is about easy money related to real estate. Everything's gonna be related to real estate. And, and but first, we wanna break down what that easy money looks like. But real estate has so many opportunities. So if you've been thinking about starting a career in real estate, I know it can seem intimidating. I know it seems really complicated with everything that you have to try to, to figure out to, to have a successful real estate business. But we're here to help you every step of the way. And it starts with getting a real estate license. So if you want more info on that, call us 813-333-2676. Again, that's 813-333-2676. We have advisors standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way we can. And that phone number will be at the bottom of the screen in case you guys do have any questions. But let's get down to what is easy money. What is easy money? 
what would we define easy money as? I think they're still figuring out getting our Facebook going. I don't know if Facebook doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna spread the message of good, easy money. So hopefully you guys watching over on YouTube or maybe on our website, think of what easy money means to you. Now I've asked this question to people in person before. What, what is easy money? I've, I've read books on the topic. Again, that, that four hour work week, I would say that's a whole book written on easy money on, on how to get the idea of what easy money is. But everybody has their own idea. Now, if we talk about real estate, you know, probably one of the best things that about real estate is the passive income potential. I would say passive money is easy money because if you don't have to work for the money or the less you have to work for the money, less work for more money yields more money. That's the whole four hour work week idea. That's that whole philosophy there. Real estate investing might be so there's another, if we're you know, throwing books around here, there's another book by Robert Kiyosaki called The Cash Flow Quadrant. And this is another one that is essential for understanding of money, I would say. Go, I don't get anything for saying that, but this is a book that really helps put in perspective the different ways you could earn money. But basically, if you want the, the too long, didn't read version of that, it essentially breaks down to income can be earned from four different quadrants. You could earn income as an employee, That's gonna be the largest percentage of people. The large percent of people are gonna be W-2 employees where they're getting uh, some sort of paycheck on a regular basis. And if you look at other statistics, there's another statistic that is very quite alarming, and that's 76% of people live paycheck to paycheck. There's nothing easy about living paycheck to paycheck. Doesn't matter how much money you're making, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, that does not make things easy. Why does that not make things easy? Because you're just getting enough to just get by. And, and that's usually what this side of the cash flow quadrant yields. Now, you can save money. There, there's all kinds of ways to be able to save money and live within your means and so on and so forth. But if you're not willing to do that, it makes it very difficult to actually put yourself in a situation where this is not possible. And this isn't just an idea. That's why this number exists here. That's why three quarters of Americans, if we're not the wealthiest country in the world, we're one of the wealthiest countries in the world. I'm pretty sure we're the wealthiest country, but yet 76% of people live paycheck to paycheck. And that's because this side of the, the cash flow quadrant only yields so much result. Now, a lot of people, they'll start off as an employee. Everybody gets a first job, typically. You know, some people actually start off as entrepreneurs, maybe having a lemonade stand, but then eventually they usually go get a job because that's what you need to do. That's, look, I've had many a jobs before. I'm not knocking on jobs. There's a lot of good things you could learn in jobs. One of the things it is you're going to learn in jobs is how to work. Now, that's usually not the easy money, though. It's, it's the trading time for money and a lot of people you know when you start out in real estate this is an opportunity for you to start a business but essentially when you're starting out anytime you're starting out any sort of business where you're a one man or one woman operation you're just a one person show essentially and even when you're in real estate and you're joining a brokerage you still have a business within a business so there's a lot of hats it is that you wear in that business to get that business going but however as a self-employed person, so that's what the S stands for. So as a self-employed person, you have more control. This is where you get things like having schedule flexibility. This is where you have the opportunity to earn much higher levels of income typically. Because especially if you're managing the whole operation, you know, th there's, there's agents out there that make over a million dollars a year in gross commission. Just, just one agent, just a single agent. It's possible that those are more unicorns that are out there. A lot of the people who are making a million dollars plus in gross commission have real estate teams. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about what a real estate team is. So if you're starting out, you, you, you might've heard the things before like solopreneur or, or just being self-employed or uh, maybe even mom and pop operation. Cause maybe it's like you and your spouse that are ultimately doing this venture. But if it's just the two of you, how do you go on a vacation when it is that you are the business? 
Now this is a great way to start because the thing is, if you want to go straight to easy money, and that's what I try to do early on. You know, I was young, I was young, dumb, and stupid, and I was like, all right, let me read this four-hour work week book, and I'm going to learn how to work in four hours, and that way I could have all this great lifestyle with very little work. And it's a good concept to keep in mind as long as you're actually putting in the actual work and not just trying to skate by with four hours because when you're getting started, you're not at easy money yet. We're getting to passive income. We started on this tangent about how you get to passive income. We're not there yet. So let's talk about a real estate team. That's more of a business. Because as more of a business, and, and you're never really quite in, in, in just one of these quadrant, uh, quadrants. I can't talk this morning. In any one of these quadrants. You're never just in one. You might have your foot in multiple of these. You should really. Whenever you're willing to work, that's basically you're working in one of these two categories here. This one's usually a little bit better than this one. However, if you have one of these, you might be an employee of your own business. But the thing that makes it more of a business is that it's bigger than yourself. So, you know, people wanting to be able to like take vacations and go on trips and so on and so forth. That's not just going to, I mean, granted, you could be self-employed and make a ton of money, but just understand while you go on these trips or vacations or whatever the case may be, if you don't have a business built, your money shuts off while you're, you're doing other things. And so that's why, again, a lot of the top producing real estate agents, if they want to be able to have a life, they can't just do it all on their own. And so that's why they move into maybe building a real estate team where they have other agents that they're working with and this is now a business. And this is how some agents even start out in real estate. They actually start out as an employee, essentially, of this team. Now, if ultimately you're wanting to get to being more of a business of yourself, you don't want to necessarily skip this self-employed venture. Because here's the thing I see most people do when they go to join a team right away. You know, a team, it gives you a lot of structure. There's a, there's a lot of stuff already figured out. Maybe it's a good place to start out. However, I never have seen anybody that has, was on a team and then just breaks away and does their own team. They usually have to break away, do their own self-employed thing, figure it out on their own a little bit before they're ready to start building a business. Because the general progression through these quadrants are you start out as an employee, then you basically employ yourself, and then once you're able to employ yourself effectively, you could start to employ others. But if you've never employed yourself effectively, even if you've been an employee, it's hard to make that transition into being a business. And that's why there's, again, a lot of people that are just starting out in real estate, not joining a real estate team, not doing anything like that, but starting off as a self-employed, you know, basically business within a business at their brokerage. And if you're at a brokerage that offers good structure, good training, good tools, good guidance, good support, that's what can make this a really successful self-employed venture. That's why there are so many real estate agents out there that are just single, one-person real estate, basically a team. They might have some virtual assistant or maybe a real-life assistant that they employ or something like that, but there's a very high potential, earning potential, just as a self-employed person in real estate. But again, making that transition, and there's ultimately two transitions that you can make. Not just for a business, but now let's get back to the passive side of things, the investment. Becoming an investor. Now, what does it mean to be an investor? Well, we've been talking about the differences in the ways that you earn income. And if we're gonna score these in what is the most amount of work with the least return versus the biggest return or the least amount of work, Typically, your employee type of role, especially when you factor in the long-term potential that you might be missing out if you were playing in some of these other quadrants right here, this is gonna be the most amount of work with usually the lowest return can typically compare to these other quadrants and these other ways that you can earn income. And look, that's not to say that you, you can't be an employee just make sure you're in the right situation that allows you to continue to build wealth. Because if you ever want to be able to get to easy money, to passive money, and I'd say we just leave it as that, easy money is passive money. But how do we get to that easy passive money? How do we get to that investment where we could have a sum of money? Because that's usually what it takes to become an investor is you got to have some sum of money to invest. 
Maybe you could get into some sort of investment with a, a lower cost. You know, maybe there's a lot of ways to invest, you know, either like cryptocurrencies or, or with stocks on Wall Street or also just in good old fashioned real estate, something real that doesn't have a volatile price change like you typically get in those other ones I mentioned but also giving the ability to produce passive income. If you guys are coming from the stock world, that's similar to like dividends, except for the passive income is, is not called a dividend, it's just called income because that's exactly what it is. It's income that your properties will generate. And look, in this quadrant, you don't have to be a landlord either. You don't have to be a, a, a unclog the toilet landlord. You could have a property management company do that for you. It's probably gonna cost you around 10% or something like that, but that alleviates that work. Because if you wanna work, remember that's over here. And remember, this is where you have your lowest earning potential. Your earning potential gets better here, it gets even better here, but your earning potential here becomes infinite. Because these two, especially these two over here, these are highly dependent on your time. Whereas business and investments are more dependent on money. Especially in an investment. It's very difficult to get into an investment without any capital to invest. There are, again, you might, there's plenty of books out there on no money down investing in real estate and things like that, but usually what you find in a lot of these books on no money down investing, they involve these more rare circumstances of maybe assuming a loan or, or getting a, a loan from a relative or finding somebody else and using other people's money. That's the popular one. Oh, you know money down because it's not your money, it's other people's money. That, that's, that's a great one there. But now, if you don't have experience in these other quadrants, if you're just trying to be an investor, well, getting other people's money, that involves work. That involves you know employing yourself to go talk to people and, and try to convince them why they should invest in this. You know, if you were doing this at a bigger scale as a business, that would be, you'd have an employee that's essentially there selling the investment. But when this all comes back down to you and you're starting out in real estate, you wanna be a master of all of these quadrants. Especially if you do wanna become an investor, understanding real estate as an investment and understanding the perspective of an investor, that gives you the opportunity to actually work with investors. Because again, remember, if you want the easy money, easy is passive, easy is little time, easy is done for you, easy is, is knowing the right things. That's all the stuff that boils down to making things easy. And easy cost money. That's why, again, if you're not investing a large sum of money, the passive income that you get from real estate, you know, say you have one property. And this one property, even if it generates you say like $1,000 a month, now that could be huge, that's $12,000 a year. But does that quit your job money? That might be great that your property's cash flowing $1,000 a year, but that's only $1,000 a month, but that's only $12,000 a year. And that's before your taxes, or maybe it, maybe it isn't. Even if that's out the door, $12,000, that's a great place to start. But my point is that might be a $200,000 property, $250,000 property. Again, the price point might vary, but that's a very large asset that you had to go out and acquire just to get that little amount that's not gonna be able to replace your income. And especially if you're trying to juggle this, you're trying to juggle this alongside these other ways it is that you're earning money, that's gonna make this seem not so easy because this is gonna take money to be able to scale. That's why people don't immediately just have a business that's why immediately you're not a business where you're employing people. You're not getting your real estate license and going in and hiring 100 agents and 100 agents and assistants and staff and all these other things. You know, maybe you've got a ton of money and you're gonna go right into it, but usually even if you do, this isn't the starting point. This isn't the starting line. Even if you've ran businesses before, if you're getting into real estate, this being a licensed type of profession that requires that knowledge. I mean, there are people that, that do own real estate brokerages and don't really know much about real estate. There's plenty of people out there that have money to invest and so they don't necessarily have the knowledge about how to run a real estate brokerage, but maybe they'll employ, they'll, they'll, they'll put up the money for that real estate brokerage. So that would be an example of somebody could basically invest in a business. And that is more of an investment because it's involving less of your time, less of your expertise. That's, and don't take this as, as, as an ugly side of this quadrant. I know a lot of people that might feel like they're stuck over here, that they, they're not yet an investor, they don't yet have a business that's bigger themselves. Maybe you've just been an employee and you've never even done any sort of like side hustle, gig work, or, or had a business or anything like that. 
So you might just be over here and you might feel trapped by this. But again, the good part of this is the expertise that comes. Now, typically the people who are the highest level experts are gonna be maybe more self-employed. You know, think, think of people that are like, uh, you know, uh, professionals, doctors, dentists, uh, attorneys, uh, uh, real estate professionals, whatever the case may be, they're usually self-employed people. You know, sometimes there are employees as well, but again, this is where the expertise comes from. So if you wanna hone your expertise so you can leverage that expertise as sweat equity, so that way you don't have to have the money to get your business going, you're investing your sweat equity of your time and your expertise, that's how you could morph this self-employed and, and now drive this more into actually growing into a business. So how would this look in real estate? How would this look if you're taking this path through real estate? Maybe you have a job right now and you're not happy with the job. I had a job before real estate. I wasn't happy with the job. I was happy at first. I was at that job for about five years. I was happy for the first two years and it was after about two years that's where I felt like I, w I felt stuck. And that, that happens a lot of times here because this is where people get frustrated, where they know they could do more, they know that they've got bigger, better ideas, but because they don't quite maybe have that expertise, that experience, or whatever it is, they're maybe not taken seriously. And if that's you, look, I mean, there's a lot of people that are in your shoes, because that's one of our favorite questions to ask when, when uh, we're starting pre-licensing classes, is like, why are you here? What, what is the reason why you wanna get a real estate license? And, and the number one reason we hear is people are unhappy with their job, unhappy with their position, and they wanna start a real estate. Hey, no kidding, that was, that was why I wanted to do real estate. I didn't even wanna do real estate at first. My fa I come from a family of real estate, so I didn't even wanna do real estate at first. I went out in the world, did my own thing, and then again, after about two years, I started hating it, and I didn't hate it right away, but it grew into hatred. It grew into, and, and it was doing me more harm than good because I was no longer even putting myself in a position to where I could even advance because I felt so disengaged, because I felt so frustrated, because I felt so far behind to where I expected that I should be at this point. I felt like with everything it is that I've done and everything up until this point that I should be much farther ahead than where it was that I am. And that's why real estate is so attractive to so many people is because because it's performance-based pay, basically 100%. Most of the time as a real estate agent, as a realtor, as a real estate professional, whatever you're calling yourself, when you get a real estate license and go join a brokerage, even though you're part of a brokerage, you're usually an independent contractor and you're getting paid commission. What does that commission look like? Well, it's let's say it's a $333,000 property and it's a 3% commission. That's $10,000 in gross commission. Now you're usually gonna have some commission splits with your broker, um, and of course, now that you're running a business, there's gonna be costs to running a business, but you sell an average house at 3% commission, that's $10,000 in gross commission. Again, before your costs kick in. But you control this, because this is up to you on how much it is that you sell. And even when you're joining a brokerage, it isn't like you're trying to beg for a job like you normally do as an employee. You're going around and finding the right brokerage that is the right fit for your business model. You know, as an employee, that's the one thing I hated about getting a job is you have to go there and, you know, make sure you, you're, you're looking real good and, and they're asking all these questions, trying to get inside your head and find out who it is that you really are when you might not even know who it is that you are. And that's a really intimidating experience. As a self-employed person, you make these decisions. You're choosing which broker it is is going to be the best for your success to try to find which one is going to align the most with your business plan and what you're trying to do with real estate. You know, based on your background, based on your training and your knowledge, you're, you're absolutely, as a new agent, gonna need a brokerage that trains you, and most brokerages do, but then there's different levels of training. Is it just a little bit of real estate that you wanna know, or do you need to learn about real estate, sales, marketing, business, investing, all these different topics that, that make you a well-rounded professional? That's what gets you to easy money. 
it doesn't happen overnight. It's, it, you can't just read the four hour work week and then all of a sudden figure out easy money. I've read that book like 10 times and, and the easy money is still, it's still not easy enough. I'm still, it gets easier every single day. And that's the thing, as you start to move in the right direction, the money gets easier every day. Now I shouldn't say every day because there are some tough days. There's still, there's still gonna be ups and downs. Nothing is gonna be just a constant rise, but you want it to be when you zoom out and look at it, that there's that constant growth, that constant momentum. Maybe some little speed bumps, little hiccups here and there as you're learning, as you're growing, the growing pains. But ask yourself the question, if, if you want to see yourself in five years making $500,000, are you in a position now, looking back five years ago, imagine yourself five years from now looking back, what do you need to do to get yourself to that point in five years from now? And maybe it's not $500,000 a year. Maybe you're like, I don't even know what to do with $500,000 a year. Okay, we'll figure out what it is that you need, not just to get by, but to live that life it is that you deserve. How long it is it you wanna take there? Now, what is it? what actions do you need to take? Because look, the, the great thing about this cash flow quadrant, another thing you start to understand is this, is infinite. There's no limit to how much money is out there. They run out of money, they just print more. Go read the rules of Monopoly. Bank never runs out of money. That's the same exact way our US Treasury works. Bank never runs out of money. There's no limit. There's, there's infinite money that's out there, which means that you will never have enough because there's gonna be continuing to be more and there's gonna continue to be inflation and there's gonna be more and more and more money. So if you're not trying to increase your level of income, you're gonna end up getting left behind. And that's the frustrations of this side of the cash flow quadrant, especially up here, because this is where you have the least control. It usually has the most stability but here's the thing about stability. Stability looks like this. It doesn't look like this. If you wanna go skyrocket, if you wanna get on a rocket to the moon, stability doesn't get you there. That's where you've gotta do things that scare you a little bit more, that are a little bit more intimidating. But the thing that should really scare you is this, time. It's supposed to look like a clock, I don't know if it does. Time, the time. That is your limited resource. Until science cracks the code on immortality, until we could drink some sort of serum and live forever, until there's something like that, this is the most finite resource that you have. And that's the problem with this rule, is it takes this to get this. It takes time to get money. And that's all this is about here, is trading the time for the money. As a self-employed person, you're still trading time to money, but you could do it in a smarter way. You could do it in a way that is gonna get you money faster, where it's gonna be easier. You might not be at the easy money yet, but it's gonna be easier because then you could break out of this paycheck to paycheck, the just getting by nonsense. And it's frustrating because in this situation here, there's only so much control that you have. You might be in maybe a sales, a commission-based type of position where you could earn more money, but maybe even there, you're starting to realize your limitations. You know, a quick example I could give you, uh, uh, one of our past students, his name was David Cribbs, and uh, he was in car sales before. He was in the auto industry, and he did really well selling cars, but as an employee of car dealerships, there was only so much money that he could make. And when he started in real estate, he went directly to go work for a home builder. I don't remember the home builder off the top of my head, probably wouldn't, just shouldn't tell you if, even if I did, but he went to go work for some home builder. And his claim to fame is he made over $100,000 in his first year in real estate. And he left. And we, if you, this was years ago, you go back and find the episode where we interviewed him on here. But we asked him the question, and it's like, well, why, you're making over $100,000 a year, why, why did you leave? Why, why would you wanna leave something like that? And he said, well, because I was only making $100,000 a year. And there really wasn't much room for me to make much more in that type of position. So that's one of the options you have as a real estate licensee is you could go work for a home builder. But at a home builder, you're again still kind of up here, more of an employee. And, and the big limitation that you have working for a home builder as per licensing laws is you could only sell the properties of that developer. You're not able to broker deals. And that's what gives us so much flexibility when we're working under a brokerage is we could broker deals between independent buyers and sellers. 
We're not working directly for the buyer or directly for the seller. We're working for our brokerage and our brokerage is there to broker deals, to bring together buyers and sellers. And again, you're typically a 1099 independent contractor where you literally are running your own business within the larger business that is your brokerage. And your brokerage is there to provide support, technology, tools, training, coaching, mentoring, everything it is that you need for your success. Now, everything you need for your success might not involve that whole list. It might even involve more things. And that's what you're doing. Again, you're not going around trying to beg for a job to, to say, please, will you hire me? Please, will you hire me? You walk into pretty much brokers, any broker's office and you don't make a fool of yourself, they'll want you to work with them because they know that if you're willing to take the necessary steps given their model, if their model is a good fit for you. That's really the question. That's the time where, where you see agents leaving brokerages is they're maybe just not too sure whether or not this brokerage is the right fit for them. And a lot of times agents who maybe go into a brokerage not asking the right questions, maybe then they go join a different brokerage later once they figure out more so what they need from a broker. And you're not tied to any brokerage. You could leave at any point. You could go and change brokers. Now, there are some strings that attach to things like that, especially if you have current business going, but you have that flexibility because ultimately you do have control within certain legal restrictions that have to be followed. But outside of that, this is your business. And if you want to pick it up and move it to a new brokerage, you could do that to a certain extent. And the, the only limitation is just any current contracts you have because they're contracts with the brokerage organization, not necessarily with you directly. Uh, so you just have to talk with your broker on how those are handled on your exit strategy. And most brokers, they usually don't want to keep you there against your will. If they do, that's definitely not a brokerage. It is that I would join. That might be a question you ask them is like, well, what if I find out this isn't a good fit for me and I want to go somewhere else? What does that look like? You know, people don't like to talk about, you know, the divorce when they're getting married, but especially in business when there's money involved and there's a lot of things maybe that brokerage has in place that you might not be aware of. That's where, again, you want to ask these right questions to make sure you're making the right decision. But it's about you asking the questions, not about them saying, all right, well, what do we think about you? Yes, I, I think uh, I think you are going to be, uh, I will allow you to be one of our agents and they go and sign up. And that's not how most brokerage operates. There are some out there that are like that especially if they're a smaller brokerage, but especially the larger brokerages, they're, come on down, we got a great model, come check it out, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't, that's up for you to figure out. They're gonna tell you how all the ways it could work, but again, you wanna base this around your business plan because if you wanna get to a business, you've gotta take the control, you've gotta take the lead, you've gotta plot out the map for your success because no one's gonna care about your success more than you. So look, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about easy money and how to get to that easy money, but stick with us. I'm John Crismo, you're watching Ask the Instructor. Hey, so if you're thinking about starting a real estate career, it could feel a little overwhelming sometimes. Look, that's completely understandable. That's why we're here to help. If you haven't already, check out our success center, tampaschool.com forward slash success. Or if you don't even know where to begin, give us a call. We'd love to help you out. We've got advisors standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way it is that we can. Our phone number is 813-928-0106. Again, that's 813-928-0106. Give us a call. We're the Tampa School of Real Estate. Do you want a career that allows you to be in control? With a career in real estate, you'll get to call the shots. Whether you're looking at starting part-time or want to become the next top agent, a career in real estate makes it possible. Find out what it takes at tampaschool.com. Do you want to incorporate studying for your real estate exams into your busy schedule? Now you can review the key topics you need to know to pass your class and state exams with our MP3 audio review. Simply pop in your headphones or connect to your car to reinforce crucial information while you exercise or drive. Listen to the first unit for free at mp3audioreview.com. That's mp3audioreview.com. Are you thinking about a career in real estate? Hey, I'm John Crismo with the Tampa School of Real Estate, and we've helped thousands of people just like you obtain their real estate license. If you're thinking about a career in real estate, give us a call. The phone number is 813-928-0106. Our advisors are standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way they can. Hey, 
If you're enjoying the show today, which I'm sure you are, be sure to hit like, subscribe, post your comments, share with your friends and family. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, welcome back to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Christman. The show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. We're here every single Wednesday, 12 noon Eastern time. If you guys like today's show, make sure you hit that thumbs up button so we know what topics to do more on and hit that little bell icon so you don't get any, uh, don't miss any of the updates that we have of whenever we have new episodes coming out. But let's get back to today's topic on easy money. So I could sum this up in, in a few words. Easy money doesn't come easy until it comes easy so easy money doesn't come easy until it comes easy someday you're going to get to the point where it comes easy and a big thing that's going to power the money to come easy because it's not just accumulating the money because that's what we're talking about here there's only so much money you can accumulate and with the constant printing of money that goes on with the constant growth of of the gdp with the constant growth of everything with more people on the planet whatever it is that it is out there you're gonna need more money. Let's just agree on that one, you're gonna need more money. If you don't believe me, just take my word on it, you're gonna need more money. It doesn't matter what point you get to. But that's the great part about an investment that produces passive cash flow. That's probably the easiest money you'll get. Because then you get checks. Now, there might be, again, still be some bumps and some hiccups. Not, nothing is perfect. None of this stuff is guaranteed. So they're disclaiming all this. this is all, these results are not guaranteed in any of this because it's up to the amount of work that you put into this. It's about not just the amount of work in it because you could work as hard as possible as an employee, but that's not going to get you a massive investment portfolio. Not unless you start to venture into these other categories here. Doing your job the best you can won't make you a real estate investor. That's obvious. You got to start investing, but then how do you start investing if you can't save up the money? Because if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you've either got to take a huge lifestyle cut to, to really just set aside all the money and do that and keep setting aside money. But I mean, you might need 20, 30, 40, $50,000 to get into a point where you can seriously invest in real estate or at least seriously get started in real estate. And maybe you could cut some time out of that or cut some money out of that. But getting to the point where it is easy, again, that's where we take the work out of that. Because it's not easy if you're working yourself to death. And that's, that's, again, that's where this happens to a lot of people. There's so many people that just die at work. Literally, they die at work. They're working so hard to die at work. Not everybody that dies at work is dying because they're working so hard, but, but some people do. You could kill yourself doing your job, and it's not going to get you to this quadrant over here. So that's where you've got to open the doors to new opportunities, to new ventures, to new possibilities that might not be a direct path because it's very difficult to jump from here to here. As I said, the typical, more normal progression that most people are going to follow is you're first starting out to get into a vehicle where you could earn more money. And look, it's not just real estate. There's there's way you could earn more money, you know, doing like multi-level marketing, or you could go make more money, you know, running like a food truck or a little food stand or something like that. There's all kinds of little side hustles you could do, but as long as that involves your time, that's not going to grow you bigger than yourself. However, if that is something that could earn you more money, where maybe rather than earning, you know, twenty dollars an hour, you could earn two hundred dollars an hour. That's the difference between these here. You know, maybe twenty dollars here is two hundred dollars an hour there. Not necessarily doing the same thing, but there's opportunities out there for you to earn larger. And this is where you have to calculate your earning potential on this side of the quadrant. is is based on your time, how much time you're putting in to get this money. You could become a millionaire earning minimum wage. It's just going to take you like 40 years to become a millionaire earning minimum wage and you just have to save every penny it is that you earn. You don't save it. Let's say you only save half your money. It's going to take 80 years for you to become a millionaire earning minimum wage. So if you make it to 80 and you could save half your money every month, even if you just make minimum wage, you could eventually have $1 million. But that's probably not anything that's going to get anyone excited. Who wants to wait 80 years for a million dollars? Even 40 years. Even if you get somehow figured out how to save all the money, 40 years is ridiculous. Let's say you make double minimum wage. I think minimum wage is like $8, something like that. So what, $16, whatever that is. That's not going to be 40 years. Now we're talking 20 years 
Okay. Now see how we're moving things faster. 20 years is still a long time to wait to get a million dollars though. So what about we double that? Okay, well now instead of $16, we're talking $32. So $32, let's cut the 20,000 in half again. That's 10, 10 years instead of 20 years. So 10 years maybe if we're making around $32 an hour, but who wants to wait 10 years for just a million dollars? So let's say we want to do it in five years. Well, now we have to be earning $64 an hour. If we want to do it in two and a half years, we have to make $128 an hour. We want to do it a year and a quarter. You're going to be making $256 an hour. So even this $200 an hour, working 40 hours a week by my quick mental math, isn't going to get you to the million dollars in a year. But look how we just shrunk that down from 80 years down to one year. But if obviously the minimum wage isn't going to get you there. And, and even if you're earning a good high hourly rate, you know, I don't know exactly what some of you guys might be earning when you break that down uh, on, uh, as an employee when you're, you're getting your paychecks of the hours it is you're putting in. But even if you're earning some sort of salary or whatever it is with bonuses, find out out the door what is it that you're taking home in, in money there. So, so you know what this is worth right here. Because understanding this will help you figure out how you grow this. And even if this is where you are, you want to know where you are. If you ever want to escape certain territory, you have to know the territory you're in very well. You have to figure out what is it that you're going to potentially walk away from. What is it that you have to beat? And that's going to make the questions, the answers to your questions about, is this going to be a good fit? Is this something that I want to try to do? And if you go from a potential of $20 an hour to $200 an hour, and, and you really do the math. If you've seen some of the episodes we've done on business planning, this is what we break down on the episodes of business planning of Ask the Instructor in State of Real Estate. We're breaking down you know, how much is it that you're earning hourly. So that way you keep a gauge on where your money is going. Because again, whenever you're investing your time, you've got to keep tabs on what is it that you're earning there. Because that's going to help you answer the questions of how do I spend my time better? How do I spend my time, the finite time that I have, better? Because that's what's going to lead you to the easier money. But again, it's not going to come easy. It's going to involve more work. It's going to be more difficult to get to easy money. It's hard to get to easy money. But that easy money, when you get there, oh my God, come join the party. Get earning money without having to do anything aside from making sure there's a property management company, making sure that the property is rented and making sure all the numbers check out and all the higher level activities that you're doing when you're treating this truly as an investment. That's awesome. You don't have to, to worry about will your team make sure the, the company still runs if you want to take a vacation. This is where your life can be a vacation and work becomes optional rather than a requirement where your your time is no longer connected to your money. And that's a beautiful thing, but that's what I would call easy money. And that's an ultimate great end target if you're not already yet an investor. And maybe you're an investor through stocks and things like that. And those are great, especially when they do appreciate and the market doesn't crash and all the crazy things like that that give people heart attacks. But also that's, that's where this is more of, of a business or you being self-employed. Because really the investment and the returns are usually not great with these, or especially compared to what you could earn in real estate, but like 401ks, IRAs, the things that are managed for you, that's more of an investment. When you're investing in stocks directly yourself and you're doing research and you're spending time, remember your time is the ultimate cost here, that's where this is more of a self-employed venture. Unless maybe you have employees that are researching the stocks for you and you're just sitting back more so kind of managing the business. And it's not necessarily involving your time to make those stock picks and the buys and sells and trades and things like that. You know, the day trading, a lot of people mistake day trading as an investment. Day trading is not an investment, day trading is a job. It's a job where you employ yourself. That's a self-employed type of profession. As is real estate, and here's the thing, there's tons of money to be made with both of those. However, if you wanna to get to passive cash flow, you gotta buy a lot of stocks to get good passive cash flow from dividends. You gotta be like Warren Buffett level to be able to to like retire from, from just working just from the dividends it is that you're earning if you wanna live like a good lifestyle or whatever it is your determination is of that. Just do the math. Do the math on this stuff. Don't let this be arbitrary. Don't let this just being some free floating ethereal concept in your head. Do the math, figure out what it is that you need to do and then start taking actions to get there. 
But until you figure out what is necessary, you're going to feel like you're stuck. And again, if you're looking for a way to get on this path, to get to a point where you could build a real estate empire, if you want to be able to, to be a real estate investor, a great way to start out with that, what we recommend, again, is getting started with a real estate license because then you can learn real estate, start to know real estate, start to be able to speak more confidently to re about real estate. And there's tons of real estate agents that are investors. And they're investors because maybe they worked with other people that are investors and they got to see firsthand how that investor handles their business. Or maybe they just went and figured it out on their own because they have so many opportunities in front of them when their profession is real estate. And the great thing about real estate is because it is a self-employed, it could even be a side hustle. There's so many realtors out there that do real estate like a little side hustle that, you know, just some extra money it is that they make on the side. Maybe they sell one or two deals a year. I still remember being at one of my little brother's uh, baseball games at one point, one of his, uh, I think he was in doing college baseball or something like that. And there was a, a sheriff there that was uh, watching his son play. Uh, well, kind of watching his son play because he was sitting at a picnic table and he was in his full sheriff deputy outfit and everything. And he's over there on the computer on the MLS. Not on a consumer site, but the actual realtor MLS. He was logged in. He was a realtor. And so he was doing that on the side. You know, he loves to protect and serve his community, but that only pays so much money. And so that's why he's doing this thing on the side with the time it is that he has. You know, for so much of my life, I worked long hours. I still do. Uh, of time that, that, that I spend working on investments, working on multiple businesses. And when you really take into account all that time it is that you have and you're willing to spend a little bit of that time to double down on it, to put that sweat equity in, you do that at your company, you're probably just gonna get overtime. Maybe a promotion with a little bit more pay, but that direct payment, that direct incentive, the only thing that's guaranteed is maybe some overtime pay if you're working some extra hours. The overtime pay you could earn yourself, putting that overtime work towards a self-employed venture till you could eventually build into a business which you could eventually start investing in real estate. And maybe you don't even end up building a real estate business because you could bank up a lot of money really quick if you're earning 10,000 or close to 10,000. You might have a split with your real estate broker, but even if it's 70, 30 and you're getting like $7,000 out of that $10,000 commission there, that $7,000, that, that might be a lot easier than what you're doing right now. That's the thing a lot of people, when they start to figure out real estate, they're like, huh, this is easy. This is, and it's not that it's, it's ultimate easy, but it's way easier maybe than what they're doing before for the amount of income it is that they're able to earn. You know, it's not unrealistic to think that you could close 100 deals in a year. There's plenty of agents out there that, that do that. We could pull their stats. We could go look in the MLS and look at all the agents that, and all the real estate it is that they sell. So that it's out there. People are doing it. And the real question is, well, why aren't you? If that is something that you want to do, why are you not doing it yet? And it might be you just not have thought out that progression. You haven't reverse engineered from where it is that you want to be and how it is that you get yourself there from your current position. But that's the tough questions you have to ask yourself if you want to be able to get to easy money. Easy money doesn't come easy. Easy money is hard. But if you put in the work to get the easy money, once you get there, welcome to the party. So look, that's about all the time we've got for today's episode. If you guys have questions on, you know, getting started in real estate, learning more about real estate, call us up 813-333-2676. Again, that's 813-333-2676. We have advisors standing by to answer any questions that you have and assist you in any way it is that we can. Look, we're not a real estate school that's just here to, to put you through a pre-licensing course and call today. We're here to support you for the life of your real estate career. We want to see our students, our alumni of Tampa School of Real Estate go on to do great things in real estate because that makes us look good. You guys do good, it makes us look good. So we want to see you guys do good, but we know we got to go the extra mile to help you get on that path. That's why we're here every single Wednesday and every single Friday. If you guys like today's episode, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. We'll do more episodes just like this. And if you're not yet subscribed, hit that little bell icon so you get notifications whenever it is we have new content to share with you to help you achieve your dream real estate career. So look, that's about all the time we've got for today. Again, the phone number 813-333-2676, or you can check us out online at Tampa school.com. That's about all the time we've got for the day. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next week. Are you studying for your Florida real estate exam? If you are, you need to check out our pass first try strategy. You're going to love this. It's four steps that we break down the process to study for your Florida real estate exam. So you're set up to pass your Florida real estate exam because that's what you're, you're studying for, right? To pass your exam. It's four steps. Number one, you learn the information. You've got to learn this to be able to 
pass the exam, but it doesn't stop at learning. Step two, you've got to reinforce the basic simple key concepts. As you learn this information, keep reviewing the simple things. You don't need to know everything, but you got to review these basic key concepts. Step three, you've got to test your knowledge. The exam's going to test your knowledge, so if you don't test your knowledge in advance, you won't find out if you know what you think you know until you take the exam. And then step four is be confident and prepared, because even if you know this material, you need to be confident that you know the material. Check out the full strategy at PassFirstTry.com. That's PassFirstTry.com. Have you completed your post-licensing education yet? Look, I know you're probably thinking, hey, it's not my renewal deadline, I don't need to do post-licensing yet, but look, here's why you wanna do post-licensing as soon as you've got your real estate license, as soon as you're able to take post-licensing. It's not just another course about arbitrary laws that you're never gonna use again. It's about real world, usable, topics that'll help you grow your real estate business to help you take it to the next level look let me ask you this one question if this course helps you close just one deal if you get one extra deal from post licensing is it worth the investment i'd say it is we get paid pretty well so one deal means a lot of money check out postflorida.com that's postflorida.com for the full details about post licensing powerful tool to study for your real estate exam is the question simulator from Tampa School of Real Estate. We've used our years of experience in preparing students for the Florida real estate exam to bring you the most powerful exam study tool available. In the question simulator, you'll be able to go directly to a particular unit so you can focus on the sections where you need the most practice. We have also included the percentages of each unit so you know which units are the most important for your real estate exam. Every question will immediately give you detailed feedback which is almost always more important than the question or the answer themselves. After completing all the questions in a particular unit, you can go through question by question and review any that you've gotten wrong. You could also print out a report at the end of each quiz. The Question Simulator from Tampa School of Real Estate is 100% mobile compatible, so you can practice with test questions anywhere you have your phone with you. Enroll now at questionsimulator.com and get ready to pass your exam. Hey, so if you're thinking about starting a real estate career, it could feel a little overwhelming sometimes. Look, that's completely understandable. That's why we're here to help. If you haven't already, check out our success center, tampaschool.com forward slash success. Or if you don't even know where to begin, give us a call. We'd love to help you out. We've got advisors standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way it is that we can. Our phone number is 813-928-0106. Again, that's 813-928-0106. Give us a call. We're the Tampa School of Real Estate. Do you want a career that allows you to be in control? With a career in real estate, you'll get to call the shots. Whether you're looking at starting part-time or want to become the next top agent, a career in real estate makes it possible. Find out what it takes at tampaschool.com. Do you want to incorporate studying for your real estate exams into your busy schedule? Now you can review the key topics you need to know to pass your class and state exams with our MP3 audio review. Simply pop in your headphones or connect to your car to reinforce crucial information while you exercise or drive. Listen to the first unit for free at mp3audioreview.com. That's mp3audioreview.com. Are you thinking about a career in real estate? Hey, I'm John Christman with the Tampa School of Real Estate, and we've helped thousands of people just like you obtain their real estate license. If you're thinking about a career in real estate, give us a call. The phone number is 813-928-0106. Our advisors are standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way they can. Hey, 
Hey, if you're enjoying the show today, which I'm sure you are, be sure to hit like, subscribe, post your comments, share with your friends and family. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah.